Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udiraye Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavate Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Neshtake Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur on Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Mandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam, Savadutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha, Krishna Padan, Sahagana, Dalita, Shri Vishakan, Vitamsha, E Krishna, Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bando, Chakatpate, Gopesha, Kopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namostate, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrinda Vaneshwari, Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shashanyavadi Paschatyadi Shatarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 3. We are on text 26. So continuing, corporate by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. For pure devotees of the Lord who are completely satisfied with transcendental loving service of the Lord, there is hardly any necessity to visit various places of pilgrimage. But those who are not so advanced have the prescribed duties of visiting pilgrimage sites and regularly performing the rituals. Part of the princely order of the Yadu dynasty who went to Prabhas performed all duties to be done in a place of pilgrimage and offered their pious actions to their forefathers and others. So Prabhupada is saying, if one is a pure devotee of the Lord, they do not have any obligation to perform any rituals. You know, because we are doing the highest, we are engaging in the highest activity of pleasing Krishna. If one is a pure devotee, his only, his every action, his every word, his every thought is for the pleasure of Krishna. And there is nothing higher than that. So he's already situated on the highest platform. So he has no obligation to do anything else. But Prabhupada is saying, but those who are not so advanced, then they have to follow the rules and regulations, go for pilgrimage. And then when you go for pilgrimage, then there are certain things you have to do. You take a bath there, you offer the prayers. And then the Yadus did that and they... Um, they offered their pious actions to their forefathers. As a rule, every human being is indebted to God. I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask you that Prabhas. So, which sthan is Prabhas? I'm not sure where it is geographically. I'm not sure where it's Prabhas. Okay. Um, the demigods, great sages, other living entities, people in general, forefathers, etc., for various contributions received from them. Thus, everyone is obliged to repay the debt of gratitude. We think we are independent, that we don't owe, have any obligation to anyone. 
but we are obligated to God because he's maintaining us. He's providing us for all our necessities. If he, did, if he didn't create the air, how would we breathe, you know, or the water? When there's not sufficient rainfalls, how much we suffer. And so we're also indebted to the demigods because they are making sure that we, we are getting all our necessities on time. They are in charge of the universal management. And great sages, because they're always trying to act for the benefit of the common people. Also living, other living entities, we are not independent. We are dependent on so many other people. You know, we think we are, we are not in, dependent on anyone, but actually we are, we are so dependent on so many. Uh, and so we have, we have an obligation. We have an obligation, and that's the reason. We are encouraged to become devotees of Krishna, take up the chanting process properly, so that, because just by pleasing Krishna, we are pleasing all the others. We are, we are reaping our debt to all, to the forefathers, to the demigods, to other living entities, everyone. Like watering the root of a tree, when we pour the water of the, water to the root of the tree, automatically the tree becomes green and the leaves become green. We don't need to individually water. If we have to individually water, the tree won't be very good. The Yadus who went to the Prabhas pilgrimage site performed their duties by distributing land, gold, and well-nourished cows in royal charity, as described in the following verse. What is the difference between the other living entities and people in general, like to whom we are indebted? Everyone, actually, we are indebted to even all the animals. I mean, you know, the, okay, the living entities will include the animals and everybody. Yeah, the trees. Then, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and the the people in general? So we are so much like, for example, just to go to the supermarket to buy what we need. There's so such a big supply chain involved. The farmers are growing the food. If they were not growing, how would we eat? You know? Okay. okay. Yeah. So other living entity means all the species, whoever is there, we are indebted to them also. Yeah, like the trees. The, because of the trees, we can get fresh oxygen, right? The, they are giving us, they are breathing in carbon dioxide and then they are giving out oxygen. So we are dependent on the trees for this, isn't okay. it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so like that, the whole ecosystem, we are so dependent on so many living entities. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Even the bacteria in our, in, our, in our body to break down the food. They are living entities too. So Krishna has made it like that, that each of us, we are none of us is dependent, although we are, I'm sorry, independent, although we think we are independent, we are not independent at all. So reading on text 27. Hiranyam rajatam shayam vasam si ajina kambalan yanam rathan ibahan kanya the Brahmanas were not only given well-fed cows in charity, but also gold, gold coins, bedding, clothing, animal skin seats, blankets, horses, elephants, girls, and sufficient land for maintenance. All these charities were meant for the Brahmanas, whose lives were devoted entirely to the welfare of society, both spiritually and materially. The brahmanas were not giving their services at paid, as paid servants, but the society provided them with all necessities. The, when in, in the early days before Kali Yuga, even up to Dwapar Yuga, when Lord Krishna was here, the society was divided into the Varna Sharma system where each section of the society was taking responsibility and engaging in their duty. So the brahmanas, they're like the head, they're the most intelligent and the administrators of the state would take guidance from the brahmanas of how the state should be managed. 
and the brahmanas would give them proper guidance so that the common person could live peacefully happily materially and at the same time was given the opportunity to uh, engage in spiritual practices in uh, to make this life the last life. And the brahmanas, they, they wouldn't take salary from these administrators or the kings. You know, they were independent, but they, were, they would be supported by charity. It was arranged for some of the brahmanas who were diffic in difficulty for marriage to be given girls. The brahmanas, therefore, had no economic problems. The Kshatriya kings, and rich mercantile men would provide with them with all that they needed. And in exchange, the brahmanas were completely de devoted to the elevation of society. That was the way of social cooperation between the different castes. So the, the brahmanas, when they would suggest the kings or the administrators how to act, how to manage the state affairs. It was not that because they are going to get rich that their pockets will get full. Not, in, now, not now as our experiences in Kali Yuga. No, they were just acting for the welfare of the whole society, how everybody would be benefited. When the Brahmana class or caste gradually became easygoing, being fed by the society, although they had no Brahminical qualifications, they degraded themselves into Bra Brahma Bandhus or disqualified Brahmanas and thus other members of society also gradually fell down from the social standard of progressive life. So the caste system actually became a, a, a problem when the Brahmanas, when they stopped doing their duty of, of um, guiding the administrators for the welfare of everyone, but they started becoming selfish to their own needs. And because they were not giving proper guidance to the administrators, the administrators were not able to take care of the people in general. And so the, mer the traders, the merchants, they said, oh, we are, we are working so hard and the administrators are not taking care of us. Why should we pay taxes? So then they, they stopped paying taxes. And then the Shudra says, oh, I used to be protected by all the early, higher three castes, but seems like nobody is taking care of me. So then the Shudras, they will resort to thieves, being thieves, stealing, you know, exploiting others, everything. And in Kalyug, Bhagavatam says we are all born Shudras. So we can see how the, what is the position, you know, the degraded position of society. It started because the Brahmana uh, community fell down. That's how, that's how it happened. As described in Bhagavad Gita, the caste system is the creation of the Lord and is arranged according to the quality of work rendered to society and not in terms of birthright as falsely claimed in the present degraded society. So it was not that somebody who's born in the family of a Brahmana would be a Brahmana, but they had to qualify. What are they, act, what are they speaking? How are they acting? How are they guiding? But now we see that somebody will say, yeah, yeah, I'm from the Brahmana community, but they're not doing anything Brahminical. They're not learning the Shastras or teaching the Shastras, teaching people about uh, spiritual life, about self-realization. So that, that is Kalyu. And the degradation of the Brahmana caste started when Parikshit Maharaj was wrongly cursed by Shringi, the, the small boy of Shamak Rishi. And he was cursed to die. That, that began the downfall of the Brahmana community. Text 28. Anam choru rasam te bhyo datva bhagvat arpanam bo vipratha savaha shuraha prane murbhuvi murd Thereafter, they offered the Brahmanas highly delicious foodstuffs first offered to the personality of Godhead and offer their respectful obeisances by touching their heads to the ground. They lived perfectly by protecting the cows and the Brahmanas. 
the behavior exhibited by the descendants of Yadu in the pilgrimage site of Prabhas was highly cultured and exactly to the point of human perfection. The perfection of human life is attained by following three principles of civilization, protecting the cows, maintaining the Brahmanical culture, and above all, becoming a pure devotee of the Lord. Without becoming a devotee of the Lord, one cannot perfect one's human life. The perfection of human life is to be elevated to the spiritual world where there is no birth, no death, no disease, and no old age. That is the highest perfectional aim of human life. Without this aim, any amount of material advancement in so-called comforts can only bring the defeat of the human form of life. And we can see that from childhood we are taught to compete with each other. We are taught, oh, you should become good in this area. You should make goals, keep on progressing, become better and better and better. But all that is just still keeping us here in the material world because all the goals we are making is to become better in this material world. You know, our knowledge is how I can live more comfortably in this material world. That's how all the material knowledge is. But that is not the goal of human life. That's not the perfection of human life. We are thinking the perfection of human life is if I become richer, if I become more beautiful, if I get more knowledge, if I get more famous, that so many people worship me, Are you're so good. You know, we think that that is the perfection of human life. We think of a perfection of human life is let me enjoy my senses to the best of my ability. But Bhagavatam says that the perfection of human life is that we maintain the cows. Why we have to maintain the cows? Because the cows give us milk. And with this milk, we develop finer brain tissues, which helps us to progress further in spiritual life. And then maintaining the brahmanas because to cultivate the Brahmanical qualities because Brahmanical qualities are actually humility, tolerance, peacefulness, steadfastness, devotion. So all the, all the divine qualities are actually Brahmanical qualities. And of course, the highest of all, to become a pure devotee of the Lord. So without becoming a pure devotee of the Lord, we cannot perfect our human life. We are all trying to excel in one field or the other without understanding that what we need to do is try to become a devotee of, of Krishna. And why? Why? Because our goal is not to continue to stay here in the material world. We are making so many goals which will still keep us here in the material world. And we are thinking we'll be happy with that. But we have had experience, no matter how much we try, no matter how much we excel in one area, we still feel that emptiness. And we say, okay, let me excel in another area and maybe then I will feel happy. Then I will feel accomplished. I will feel successful. But we are never going to feel that in the material world. Never. That ingredient doesn't exist here. The highest aim of human life is to go back home, to become a devotee of Krishna and go back home. Brahmanas and Vaishyas do not accept any foodstuff which is not first offered to the personality of Godhead. Foodstuff offered to the Lord is accepted by the devotees as the mercy of the Lord. After all, the Lord supplies all kinds of foodstuff, both to the human being and to other animals. A human being must be conscious of the fact that all foodstuffs, namely grains, vegetables, milk, water, etc., the prime necessities of life, are supplied for mankind by the Lord, and such foodstuffs cannot be manufactured by any scientist or materialist in a, lab, in a laboratory or factory established by human effort. For us, because we think, get the thing so easily, we say, oh, I just go to the grocery store and I get my groceries. I go to the supermarket, everything is there. 
So I get all the all my grains, my milk, my fruits and vegetables from the store, the supermarket. You know, but if we do a little bit more introspection, where is this all this food coming from? And then eventually we'll go to the farmers. But then what are the farmers doing? They're, they're sowing the seeds from which all the crops are coming. And then where is the seed coming from? Who's creating the seed? We are not creating these seeds in the factory, like how we are producing cars or we are producing mobile phones or laptops. We are not producing seeds. We cannot produce seeds. Seeds are provided to us by God. And that's the reason when we are eating any food, we should first offer it to Krishna because it is by his mercy we are able to have this food. And when we offer it to Krishna, it becomes prasad, his mercy. Why does it say only Brahman and Vaishnavas? Why not uh, also Kshatriya and Shudras? And, uh, so we should. Be, <laughs> we should. Right. So we it should. Be good everyone, right? Yeah, everyone should do that. Mm. Vaishnav means anyone who is, um, who anyone who accepts the authority of Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu is a Vaishnav. But where, of course, like then again, there is uh, Lord Chaitanya was asked three times, who's a Vaishnav? So one devotee asked Lord Chaitanya, who's a Vaishnav? Lord Chaitanya, one who has chanted even once the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is a Vaishnav. In time, he was asked the same question, who's a Vaishnav? Lord Chaitanya said, one who's ch constantly chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra who is uh, constantly chanting the holy name, is a Vaishnav. And then again, the third time he was asked, then Lord Chaitanya says, looking at whom another person starts to chant the holy name, that person is a Vaishnav. You know? So actually being a Vaishnav is a very high position, but what we can do in our position is try to follow in the footsteps of these great devotees. Follow. The Vaishnavas are offering food to Krishna, so we should follow in their footsteps. Because they, 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 they can lead us by following in the footsteps. We can go back home, back to Godhead. They know the way. So they're teaching us, and so we follow them. Is that okay? Yes, yeah. The intelligent class of men are called brahmanas and those who have realized the absolute truth is his supreme personal, in his supreme personal feature are called Vaishnavas. Now, because the absolute truth can be realized in three features. One is the Brahma Jyoti, the light which is coming from the Lord. The second is the Paramatma feature and the highest is accepting the personal features, Swayam Bhagwan, Sri Krishna. So the Brahmanas, they have absolute, they have realized the absolute truth. So their understanding could be limited only to the Brahman feature. You know, mostly it is limited to the Brahman feature. But a devotee, a Vaishnav, he understands the Brahman, the Paramatma, and the personal feature of the Lord. So a Brahmana, a Brahmana may not necessarily be a Vaishnava, but a Vaishnava is always a Brahmana. Being a Vaishnava is a higher status one can attain because they are understanding the position of, of Lord Krishna, his personal form of Krishna, and they are engaging in service to him. They have no material desire except to please the Lord. So it's a very high status. So, but both of them accept foodstuffs which are remnants of sacrifice. Sacrifice is ultimately meant to satisfy the yajna purush, Vishnu. So we have seen that people do the yajnas, they light the fire, the kund, then there is the fire, and then they put the, the oblations inside the fire. This is actually yajna. Why is this performed? is for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu. In Bhagavad Gita 3.13, it is said that one who accepts foodstuffs as the remnants of sacrifice is freed from all sinful reactions 
and one who cooks foodstuffs for maintenance of his body takes in all kinds of sins which lead only to suffering. So Bhagavad Gita Krishna says that when you're cooking any food and eating, you first offer it to me and then you eat, you accept it as prasad. If you don't, then you're only eating sin because it's full of material desires. It's full of material desires because we are taking Krishna's property without acknowledging that he's giving it to us. You know. So, and then the foodstuffs prepared by the Yadus at the Prabhas pilgrimage site to offer to the bona fide Brahmanas, they were all offered to the personality of God at Vishnu. The Yadus offered their sincere obeisances by touching their heads to the ground. The Yadus or any enlightened family in Vedic culture are trained for attainment of human perfection by total cooperation of service between the different divisions of social orders. So being a so we should follow in the footsteps of the devotees. The word Uru Rasam is also significant here. Hundreds of delicacies can be prepared simply by the combination of grains, vegetables, and milk. All such preparations are in the mode of goodness and therefore may be offered to the personality of Godhead. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 9.26, the Lord accepts only foodstuffs which are within the range of fruits, flowers, leaves, and liquids, provided they are offered in complete devotional service. So Krishna, he does not eat non-vegetarian foodstuff. He does not eat meat, meat, fish, eggs. He does not eat onion, garlic. He eats simple vegetarian food, which is in the mode of goodness, combination of grains, milk, and different vegetables and fruits. And then he says, offer it with devotion, love and devotion, because he does not need our food. He's the one who's providing us. What he is seeing is our devotion and our love. And by offering Krishna the foodstuff, what happens is we get purified. We get closer to him. We, get, uh, we start giving up this mentality that I am the creator. You know, I am independent. It's because of me. Devotional service is the only criterion for a bona fide offering to the Lord. The Lord assures that he positively eats such foodstuff offered by the devotees. So if we offer Krishna even a simple tulsi leaf, my dear Krishna, this is for you, he accepts it. Offer him some water, some flowers, some fruits. He accepts it. What we are cooking at home, when we cook it and then we offer it to Krishna, he accepts it. My dear Krishna, please accept it. And he accepts this. And it becomes prasad. So, so judging from all sides, the Yadus were perfectly trained civilized persons and their being cursed by the Brahmana sages was only by the desire of the Lord. The whole incident was a warning to all concerned that no one should behave lightly with Brahmanas and Vaishnavas. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the third canto, third chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Lord's Pastimes Out of Vrindavan. So Prabhupada is bringing to light that the Yadus were such highly cultured people. They're giving so much respect to the Brahmanas. They know how to, how to live, how to properly, properly glorify the Brahmanas and they are pure devotees. So how is it possible that they will, uh, they will offend the sages and then get cursed by the sages? All this was enacted as a pastime of the Lord. It was by the will of the Supreme Lord. It was Krishna's will, not that the Yadus were actually at any fault. It was just, just Krishna desired it in this way. Is that okay? So it was a will of Krishna to curse. So it was because, so that they can go back. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. 
Right. So he was teaching different things that, okay, mm -hmm. even if you are related to me, if you don't, if you don't properly, um, what do you say, respect the brahmanas and you offend the brahmanas, then your outcome won't be very good. So he's, he's saying that we should not offend the, the devotees. We should not offend the sages. You know, and then again, he's also saying that the yadus, they wouldn't be able, nobody else would be able to kill them. They wouldn't be able to, and they can't die because they are, you know, they're Lord Krishna's associates. So how to do? So he enacted this pastime. Is that okay? I just want to add that whatever offering, like when we are doing, when we're putting, we should put a leaf, tulsi leaf, the yeah. water and the food. Yeah, thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. So we can stop here for today then. Yeah. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shla Prabhupad ki jai, Gaurav Premadande, Hari Hari Bhavali, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much.